Now, of course, there's individual differences in terms of morningness and eveningness. There's also individual differences in terms of sleep and age. We know that this can vary, but on average, the, the amount of sleep we need at different ages is quite different. The average infant tends to want to sleep about 16 hours a day. That could be as little as 10 hours a day or as high as 20 hours a day. There is some individual differences, but on average, infants need about 16 hours of sleep a day because they're growing. There's a lot going on when they're sleeping. Children to be healthy and mindful and awake at school often on average need about 10 hours sleep. Teens need somewhere between seven and nine. Adults also need about seven to eight, though if they are university students, most studies have shown university students benefit from 10 hours of sleep at night. And by the time you are an elder or a senior citizen, as mentioned, five hours to six hours is very common. That being said, it's important for us to recognize in modern society, it might be hard for us to get those levels of sleep. And often we might experience what's called sleep deprivation. So in sleep deprivation, this is the idea that our access to sleep is restricted, either due to work duties or school duties, or maybe you're a parent and you're up late at night with a young infant. What happens is you're not able to get the required amount of sleep for your age. And what can happen to us? Well, psychologically, there's a lot that goes on. If you are not getting the right amount of sleep, let's say you should be getting eight hours of sleep at night, but you're constantly getting five and a half hours of sleep at night. Even with just a few nights like this, even with just three nights like this, it'll start to take a toll psychologically. You will start to feel like you become more emotionally burnt out much more easily. You'll lose your temper more often. You will become stressed and think more negatively about things. You also might be more hungry. And that's because sleep gives us energy, but the calories from food also gives us energy. So if you're pulling lots of all-nighters, you're probably compensating by eating more and you're genuinely hungry. If you find yourself eating more at night while you're studying, that's probably a signal that you're actually very sleepy. And if you're doing that on nights where you don't have to stay up, it might be wise to say, huh, maybe I should go to bed. It's also true that this will take havoc on your immune system. You're much more prone to get sick. And if there's a small germ, not like coronavirus going around, but a small germ going around, your symptoms are going to be much more severe and your immune response is going to be more intense. Letting yourself get run down will take you to commission more days than otherwise. It's also going to make that your stress continues to pile up, that cortisol is not going down to where it is. And that's going to have an impact on your heart, on your cardiovascular system, and on lots of things. And surprisingly, people who get less sleep, they don't tend to have good judgment of their skill set. They tend to feel very unrealistically overconfident in their abilities. This comes into a problem when you're driving and you think, oh, I can handle this. I'm not too sleepy. I can get on the highway. This could lead to car accidents. And so it's the idea that this overconfidence and lack of reflexes could be deadly. Now, sometimes we want to get to sleep and it's not our commitments that are keeping us awake, but it's our body. And we might be experiencing what is known as insomnia. So when it comes to insomnia, this can come in three different flavors. You might have the type of insomnia where you cannot fall asleep at night. You go to bed and you lay awake and you think about everything on your to-do list. Or you might have no problem initially falling asleep, but then you wake up constantly throughout the night and you find yourself tossing and turning all the time. Or you might fall asleep, but then you wake up mid in the middle of the night around 2.30, 3.30 in the morning, and now your mind is fully awake and you can't calm down. And so these three types of insomnia are pretty common, although insomnia tends to be overdiagnosed. And so what happens here is there's a lot of small environmental changes we can make that can actually adequately treat the majority of insomnia cases. We know that a lot of insomnia cases are caused to uh, too much screen time, too many bright lights towards the end of the day, too much caffeine or sugar in our diet, and too much stress. Now you might not be, always, uh, be able to control the stress, but that is often something that you can make lifestyle adjustments and not read the news, not go on into social media right before bed. You might just want to read a book that was written 20 years ago and not think about current affairs right before bed or listen to music. There could be ways around that. There are some cases of insomnia that are much harder to treat, and that's when it has to do with more biological and hormonal issues, such as a person who is on medication for things such as chemotherapy, or maybe they're going through menopause, or they're experiencing other biological conditions that are causing them to wake up frequently throughout the night. Most cases of insomnia are treatable with some environmental adjustments. Now that being said, we did allude to the fact that some people are sleep revived not due to hormonal issues, but due to environmental issues. And some environmental issues are beyond our control. 
For instance, if you are working shift work, let's say you have to work a couple days a week where you work from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., then from 4 p.m. to midnight, and then from midnight to 8 a.m. A shift worker who is constantly changing shifts, or even a shift worker who is constantly working night shift but has daytime duties such as raising a family or taking care of kids, you're going to experience major sleep disruption. In addition, perhaps you're a white collar worker, but your work requires you to travel across time zones all the time. You're also going to experience this really intense work and sleep disruption due to jet lag. And so let's talk about this. This is dangerous. If you have a job that requires you to constantly shift your sleep wake cycle due to uh, very prestigious white collar travel around the world or to blue collar factory shifts, it's important to understand your employer should be compensating you for the health toll this is going to take on your health. We know that this sleep disruption is problematic. This doesn't change your circadian rhythm. I want to emphasize that. So when you are constantly waking up at different times of night, it's going against your natural circadian rhythm, but we're not actually able to adjust or change it. What's causing it is you're neglecting your natural circadian rhythm. You're putting lots of caffeine in your body or lots of nightcaps in your body so you calm down at night or taking sleeping pills. And what this, this is going to do to you is all the same things with sleep deprivation and then more. You're going to be extra fatigued. You're going to feel like a zombie. Your coordination is going to be off. Over time, blood pressure tends to increase. Your risk of obesity and heart disease increases. And that's not out of your own fault. That's out of uh, endocrine disruption in your circadian rhythm. And of course, your stress will increase. So we know that workers that have to do the sleep disruption more often, they may find themselves on workplace disability at younger ages than people who get to have steady office hours of daytime shifts. So something to keep in mind. On the other end of the spectrum, we have sleep indulgence. Can there be too much of a good thing? Definitely. As Aristotle said, everything in moderation, including sleep. So sleep indulgence happens when perhaps you're on vacation for a few weeks in December or in May, and you just don't want to leave your house. Perhaps you just wrapped up a really intense semester in fall or in winter, and you just decided, I'm going to sleep in, watch Netflix, play video games, and take it easy. Well, that might be fine for a few days, but if you've ever experienced the winter holidays and that time between December 25th and January 1st, where you don't have to go anywhere and there's no work obligations, you might forget what time of day it is, you might stay in your pajamas. You also might find that even though you're being rested, you feel very fatigued. You might find you want to overindulge and eat more and it has nothing to do with the holidays. You might find your motivation towards anything has lacked and you might feel that you actually feel very unmotivated towards life. This is often because of sleep overindulgence. It's important for us, especially if you just finished off a round of exams, to catch up on one or two days. But if you feel, feel yourself sliding into day four or day five of being a bit of a sloth, that can be problematic for your health in the long term. So it's good to get up and make a bit of a morning routine. When we started the work from home uh, policy back in March, when a lot of us transitioned to working from home, uh, like myself, it was important for us to have some sort of morning routine. And that's good for our psychological health. 